RGB tube lights can be some of the most versatile and useful lights in your setup. Whether it's soft continuous lighting you're after or some kind of super crazy effect, your creativity is really the only limit. But with so many different options at different price points and with different levels of quality, it can be overwhelming to decide which ones to choose. So today, I wanna to help you find out why you might want to Havo the Pavo tubes. Pavo tubes, ha they're good lights, you might want them. And before we dive in and talk about these awesome lights, just a quick disclaimer, I have six of them and I only paid for two of them and it's not because I'm a criminal. Really the whole point of this video is for me to explain why it took me so long to decide to just spend the money on the full size 30C Pavo tubes when I had spent a lot of time trying to make do with other options, cheaper options and just lower quality options to be totally honest with you. I saved up for a while and I bought two of these because it came in a kit of two. And that was pretty expensive for me. It was about like 800 bucks. It was a lot of money. But as soon as I bought those, I was like, why didn't I just buy these sooner? I even did a video review on the Pavo Tube 6Cs, the little ones. And I really love these. These are, you know, 11 inch, 12 inch tube lights. These are wonderful. I'm really glad that I have them, but I originally bought these thinking like, oh, I don't need the full size one. I could just buy these and it'll be just as good. And these are wonderful, but they're nowhere near as bright <laughs> or versatile as these giant ones here. And so that was $200. I tried to deal with all these RGB floodlights and eventually I bought my two Pavo tubes and I absolutely loved them and wish I had done it sooner. Coincidentally, right after I did that, Nanlite reached out to me and I told them how much I love the Pavo tubes and I wanted to, you know, use them in videos and do all kinds of cool stuff with them. And they said, hey, we'll send you some more. So they sent me four more. So now I have six all together, which is insane. And if you check out my lighting setup tour video, I go over exactly how I use them. And Heather even has one that she uses in her studio. So they're really, really helpful. Six of them would be a massive investment, so I'm not recommending that you go out and just drop that huge chunk of money, but you know, one or two of them, or more if your budget does allow it, is great, but I just wanted to let you know up front that I paid for two of these, but Nanlite sent me four other ones that I could use in my videos and just have fun with and stuff. They didn't send them with any conditions on, I don't have to make a video about them, I don't have to say anything about them, I, nothing. I just wanna make a video because I really like them and I'm really excited about them and Nanlite has no input into the video at all. So the lights themselves, again, these are the 30Cs. They make the 6C, which is the small one. The 30C is the big one and there's another size. I think it's the 15C is in between these. But I really love these because the larger ones I have found to be just incredibly versatile. And if you're looking for quality of light, having a bigger light, just sort of makes it helpful to disperse. Let's see if I turn off my key light right now and I put this up here as my key light. They do sell soft boxes for these, long rectangular soft boxes you can put on them, which will really soften up the light. But as you can see, even without it, it's pretty decent. Let's see, shadows are pretty harsh if it's directly at me or if it's super close or super bright. But the quality of light is really good. They're nice soft lights. They can work great as backlights and they're amazing as accent lights. Obviously I've got them all over my studio here acting as accent lights. On the actual light tube itself, there are no controls. Just one side is the light. The other side has actually a bunch of info on it. It explains how to adjust the different settings and it actually has a whole menu tree. So as you're going through the menus, it's sort of laid out right here for you. And then you do have a tiny LED display right here. And the ends of the tubes are where the other controls are. So on one end, you have all of the control buttons. That's where I can turn it into CCT mode. I can turn it into HSI mode and you can go in and dig through the menu through these buttons. You can go into the special effects. So they've got things like a police siren. And beyond the cop car, there are also storm effects, candle light effects and some customized ones where you can set your own settings and set those. A lot of the effects have flashing lights. I am super sensitive to flashing lights, so I'm not gonna demonstrate those and having to edit that, it's it's just not fun. It also has an RGB cycle mode and you can change the timing. So this is very fast, just going through all the colors. This doesn't hurt my eyes. Um, or you can slow it down to where it's basically 16 seconds to go through everything all the way down to two seconds to kind of flash through everything here. This is really fun for effects and just background stuff. It can be a pain to edit if you're using jump cuts or anything like that, but 
it can be it can be a lot of fun just to have these for ambiance. And then of course you have CCT mode where you can change the color temperature and the brightness. So go all the way from 6,500 degrees Kelvin to 2,700 degrees Kelvin. So you can get some nice warm light or some daylight. So the quality of light on these is excellent and I found them all to be pretty accurate. So if you put the same settings between multiple versions of the Pavo tubes, they all look the same. It's not like 4400 means something different on this one than that one over there. They seem to be very consistent. On this end over here, you've got the power switch and then you also have three plugs. One of them is for charging and then two of them are 3.5 millimeter jacks for input and output. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. The, the lights come with these little 3.5 millimeter cables. These do something really cool that I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, but it's one of my favorite things. Both of these have holes on these little ears that pop up over here, so you can actually run something through those and hang them if you need to hang them. And then the lights also come with these little plastic mounts that you can just put right on here. And then these have quarter 20 mounts on the bottom, so you can attach them to light stands, tripods, anything else, and then you can position the lights. You saw that in like the intro to this video, I had these all mounted on different stands like that. And of course they're really big, so you can always just lean them against stuff. Like this one over here is just leaning against the wall. This one behind me over here is also just leaning against the wall. And that's a cool thing too with these lights is that they look great on camera. So they provide excellent lighting. And if you need them off screen, providing light, kind of as you would imagine, they work great, they look great, change the colors, do all that stuff. But if you want them on camera, they can look awesome and they can really like help with your set design, they can help with your effects. Peter Lindgren just did a short film where there's kind of like an intruder alert sequence and in that you can see Pavo tubes mounted on the wall flashing red and they look like alert lights and they look really good. It's like great production design. But they also work great off screen down here in the corner. I've got two of them at a 90 degree angle and that's what's lighting up the area behind my drum set so you don't see those at all. The lights also come of course with a power brick. If you buy a single light, it will come with a single power brick. If you buy the two light kit, it still comes with a single power brick but it has a splitter that lets you attach and charge two lights with it. They can be operated via wall power power or with the built-in battery. Battery life is going to depend on how bright the light is, what effects you're using, that kind of thing. In general, I've been getting between one and three hours from a full charge, kind of depending again on what you're doing. Normally, if I have a light like this on where it's about 50% brightness and it's not doing anything crazy, it's just one color the whole time, it lasts about two and a half hours without needing to recharge it. Whichever light you get is gonna come in some kind of carrying case. Even the single lights come in a case that can carry at least two lights, and that's kind of cool. This one here can carry four lights, which is neat because these are nice rugged cases where all the lights fit in there and all the power and everything fits in there. But you can carry just this and have a four light setup. If you travel with a lot of like production lighting and gear, you probably know that it can take up a lot of space. So fitting four super bright, super capable lights in a case that small and compact is really nice if you're somebody who needs to travel with your lights a lot. And these are definitely lights that can handle being moved around and used in different locations. They're pretty rugged and pretty durable. They are made out of hard plastic. I've seen some people say that they don't like the plastic. I have found it to be super durable. It can definitely scratch, but other than looking bad, the scratch isn't going to hurt anything. And I really don't know what else you would make it out of because these can't be made out of glass. That would be super dangerous and it needs to be a transparent material that's not gonna degrade the light quality. So this seems like the best possible option. So they're very well built overall. The only area where I don't like the build quality is with these buttons here. You can probably hear it. They're, they're a little plasticky and clicky and they're fine. I've literally not had a problem with it, but it seems like if something was gonna break and get damaged, it would probably be here before anywhere else on the light. And like I mentioned just a second ago, if you buy more than one light, they'll come with this little cable right here. And this does something really cool that I just haven't heard a lot of people talking about and I think it's super neat. So on the end of the light is an input and an output. I'm gonna plug the input here to the output of this light. And once the lights are connected, you can dig into the menu 
and go to an option to combine controls and then you can decide which light is the transmitter and which one is the receiver. They use more antiquated terms for those roles that I'm not going to use in this video, uh, but I'll set this one as the receiver and we'll set this one here as the transmitter. And now they're synced together. So this light here in my right hand if I change the brightness with the light in my left hand, you see it changes the brightness with the light in my right. If I change the settings, say I go into the RGB cycle over here, now it's going into the RGB cycle over here and they're actually synced up doing the same colors at the same time. So it's a super easy way if you have multiple lights in a situation and you don't wanna to have to go from light to light and try to adjust these little dials and get everything matching perfectly, you can just sync them up super easily, super quickly and they will all match. And the way that that works is this light is just on by itself so it's doing its own thing right now. But as soon as I turn on the transmitter light, then it will kick in and take control over this light. Now there are other lights that let you do things like that via apps. I think there's some sort of way to attach an antenna to use an app, but I have not used any sort of apps with these lights at all. I actually am not a huge fan of lighting apps. I know the Aperture one, the Citus Link is pretty cool and I use that for some of my lights back here. But when I'm using a light, I like to be able to just use my light without having to fiddle with anything else. And these let you do everything just right here, instant, immediate. I don't need to pull out my phone or something else and go into an app. That's personal preference, but it is something that I like. You might even say it delights me. Actually, I guess if I turn these off, see, this is lightful and now this is delightful. Because delight, it delighted. Anyway, now can you sync more than one? So now I'm gonna take this light and connect this to the output here and to the input here. And so if I turn this one on, nothing happens. If I turn this one on, yes, you can. You can sync multiple lights, so you can just chain them all together. And obviously if you're using a longer cable, then the lights don't have to be right next to each other. That's cool because as I mentioned, these lights look great on screen. You see them a lot in music videos and stuff like that. So there's a lot of scenarios where you might want them to be synced up and matching. They're also fun environmental lights. I use them in here a lot of times when I'm not filming and when I was teaching all my high school classes online and making videos and stuff, these lights would be left on at about half brightness five to seven hours a day, five or six days a week, and I never had any single issues. I've had them for about four months now. So in my experience, they've been super reliable and super durable. Now it's not all perfect. Let's talk about a few things that I don't like. As you might've already seen just a couple times in this video, I am constantly forgetting which end of the light has which controls. So one end has the inputs and the power button, and the other end has the screen, the buttons, and the dials. I don't know what the solution would be, but maybe if there was some sort of pop of color on one end, it would help me know which end is the right end. But this end here, which is the main one, the control end, there's a couple things about it that are funky, mainly with these knobs right here. They feel really good, like they're, they're nice, high quality knobs, but there's no tactile feedback. There's no clickiness, there's no way to lock them or anything like that, so you get your settings dialed in and it's very easy to accidentally bump these or turn the wrong knob because one of them will let you go through the different settings and the other will let you adjust that. It'd be nice if there was just an easy way, maybe through like a push button or something to lock these once you have them where you want them. And it would be cool if these were tactilely like different, like one is circle and one is square or something. So that way as you're looking at the menu, I'm co constantly doing exactly what I just did actually, needing to look at the end and then moving the light and hitting it on things, trying to see which knob is which. It'd be cool if I could do that more easily without having to look at them. It's not a big deal, but it's one of those things where it's like, just a little bit of friction every time you're trying to use it. And you know, the more you can eliminate that stuff, the better. The other biggest advantage to these lights is that they are dedicated video lights. And I've talked about this before. If you're using a lighting setup that's kind of makeshift and you're not using dedicated video lights, but it's working for you, then it's great. Like if it works, it works. You don't need to spend money on anything else. For me, I was trying to get by with a lot of lights that were not made specifically for video, and I was ending up with bad colors, I was ending up with flickering, and I was just ending up with frustration. So when you're dealing with dedicated video lights, you don't have any of those problems, and RGB tube lights, as you can see, are just incredibly versatile, and I love them a lot. There are 
other options besides just the Pavo tubes for RGB tube lights. I haven't tried all of them, and if you have a less expensive option and it's working great for you, then it's perfect. However, what I can say is speaking from my own experience, as soon as I invested in the Pavo tubes, it was such a relief. It was scary to spend the money because, you know, it's their expensive lights. But once I got them, everything was just so easy. Everything looked better. I just wish I had done it sooner instead of like torturing myself for like a year and a half trying to find these makeshift solutions that just didn't really work. So whatever you choose to light your path, if you're gonna invest money in a video light, please make sure that it is a dedicated video light just to save yourself the frustration and the headaches down the line. If these are a little too big or a little too expensive for you, I do have my review video all about the Pavo Tube 6Cs, which as you will see in that video are sick lights. Bro, check out that video.